We're celebrating summer with 40 Thrive's top 10 episodes of season two. From body changes to career changes, mindset shifts to creating habits that will improve, well, pretty much everything. These episodes will make you think, laugh, and definitely grow as a woman over 40 and beyond. This time, number 10. You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougall. Hi, and welcome to another episode of 40 Thrive. I am thrilled you are here. If you're smack dab in the middle of menopause, or maybe you're not quite there yet, but you're definitely not feeling your best, or maybe you have that been there, done that attitude, and you don't even want to think about it anymore. No matter where you are in the menopause journey, today's guest is about helping us all. Catherine Balsam Schwaber is the CEO of Kindra. They make estrogen-free perimenopause and menopause essentials designed by women for you. At this point, you know I don't share products and services I haven't checked out myself. Kindra is science-backed, safe, and seriously effective. Here's the thing. Sometimes we think about symptoms we have and we think it's just us. Maybe it's not necessarily connected to menopause. I went through menopause 15 years ago at the age of 35 after surgery. And I'm telling you right now, 15 years later, I still use their products because whether you have night sweats or hot flashes or you're feeling sluggish and tired or you can't sleep or you're feeling moody, it's not just about quote unquote menopause but about all of the ways our body changes and just getting a little bit of help. I'm telling you right now, there is no prize for suffering the worst. I know it's shocking. There's no prize. So if you suffer, that's on you, my friend. There are solutions out there and I am constantly searching for them so I can bring them right to you. And by the way, partnerships like this have not only been carefully curated to help you, they are the reason we can keep providing you with this free podcast and community. It's truly a win-win for all. If you are ready to really combat some of these symptoms, head on over to ourkindra.com and get 20% off site-wide. All you have to do is use the promo code 40thrive20. That's F-O-R-T-Y, thrive, and the number 20 at checkout. I'm so glad the 40 Thrive audience liked this conversation with Catherine at number 10 because she is smart, successful, and she's super candid. I love women like that. (laughs) And I love her story because like so many of us over 40 looking to really do more meaningful, impactful work, Catherine has shifted her whole life, professional and personal, with one mission, to normalize menopause and talk out loud with each other. We will be continuing the conversation in our private Facebook group, so check out the show description for the link to join us there. And since it's summer, and whether you're in menopause or not, you're probably sweating anyway, Let's dive into my conversation with Catherine Balsam Schwaber. Catherine, welcome. Thank you so much. I am extremely excited about this partnership. And as I started to dive in to all things Kendra, your resume is impressive. And I'm fascinated by the leap from where you were. But first of all, so you went from the White House, (laughs) the Clinton White House, (laughs) to then working on a film Uh, On the American president, because that makes sense from going from one to the other. And then you work your way through media, like iVillage, talk about OG lifestyle content and NBC Universal and all that. And then how did you get here? Hmm. Well, that is a great question. (laughs) You know, I think that in retrospect, my entire career has really been about connecting to women. And very often the women that I'm trying to connect to are the women who are in the same life stage that I'm in. So when I graduated from college, I was pursuing an opportunity to change healthcare in America, which is how I ended up in the Clinton White House. And I worked on the Clinton's healthcare task force there. And it was really, you know, the first time that I had ever worked on anything that felt like it could have meaning to women and to families in their everyday lives. Mm. And when it didn't turn out the way that we hoped, I had an opportunity to meet Rob Reiner, who was making the movie, The American President. Mm -hmm. And actually what I learned from that experience was that media and communications 
can do just as much to change the way that people think about what they hear right. as policy. And that it was a real turning point for me in thinking about how you deliver messages to people that can open up their mind to think differently about what's happening in the world, but also just about the choices they make in their daily lives. Right. You know, and over time, that led me to go to business school at NYU, where I was a finance major, because I felt like that was a, a thing that I couldn't necessarily pick up on my own. And after graduating, ended up actually working in news again, similarly at NBC Nightly News, where it was an election year. And I was very passionate about being able to tell the stories of, of an election season and how important it was to get out the vote. And from there, ended up working in media. I yeah. went from there to AOL and from AOL to AOL Time Warner was at the time. And then finally kind of made my way to iVillage, which again was, yes, the OG social media platform for women, really focused on how women can support other women. Right. And thinking about my own life stages, that was when I was trying to get pregnant and I was obviously drawn to not only the business, but the other women who worked in that business. And right. that my big takeaway from the first time that I interviewed there was that every leader in the business was a working mother. And, you know, for me, that was very aspirational at the time. And they were an incredible team of women that I have worked with over and over again, actually, really? on many different jobs. And then after I village, I went back to NBC Universal and had an amazing opportunity there to work on rethinking how we go to market in the upfront and incredible female mentors who made all the difference in my career. And then uh, when my kids were young and I have uh, nine-year-old twins now, a boy and oh, a wow. girl, <laughs> and at the time... There were about three or four. I, we moved to Los Angeles from New York City, where I became the chief content officer at Mattel. And again, our life stage was entirely focused on the kids and toys and thinking about how play can change the world, which is how I ended up at Mattel. And it certainly can. But again, the work we were doing was focused on connecting with women and families and, right. and rethinking how those stories are told. And that was actually... Interestingly, the dynamics of the world were changing so much that YouTube was becoming the most important place to be able to connect with kids, certainly around content, but also with women and with families. And right. that, you know, it used to be that you could advertise on children's television and that would do the work for you. But it was really the beginning of this massive shift that we've seen for certainly my kids and all the kids on the planet who are so focused on content delivery through dedicated platforms, which has been really interesting. Right. Um, so from there, we actually went to Denver, where I was working on crafting a business, art, education, and e-commerce platform that had been bought by NBC Universal that was called Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And that was another facet of connecting to women who are incredibly passionate about their craft. And, uh, you <laughs> are know, you and, crafty? Uh, I'm more crafty than I used to be, but okay. <laughs> um, I'm perhaps not as crafty as I should be. Crafty in other ways. And I'm basically a walking Pinterest fail, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> that is. I feel similarly, but I have a lot of appreciation for mm -hmm. crafters and artists of all kinds. But, uh, so that was really interesting because community was so much a part of that right. work and women supporting other women. And very often women come to crafting because they've had some kind of disruption in their lives, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the death of a parent or a relationship splitting up and they find that craft is a really great release for that. Right. And then the leap to Kindra, which in many ways was the perfect culmination of every business that I have ever worked in, where I really felt that at this phase in my life, I wanted to work on a business that would make a difference for women, for people, 
mm-hmm. you know, but for women. And that I myself being 49. Same girl, same. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning to feel these like strange uh, changes happening in my body that when I met the fund that supports Kindra, which is M13, when I met them and we started to talk about the business, I was immediately drawn to the work. And I just felt like the opportunity to be able to develop this kind of business and help to lift up women who are so often overlooked felt both important and possible. And I think that one of the big things in my like passion journey around this business is that we get these incredible reviews from customers Mm -hmm. about how our products are literally changing their lives. I mean, women tell us that the vaginal lotion, which is our bestseller, yes, is saving their marriage and making them feel like they can go back to doing things that they thought that they couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason that I love those stories so much is that I think there's this sense of menopause as a new normal. And in the land of new normal for all of us, but that menopause is suppo- is like, this is the way I have to live my life kind of new normal. And that is really not the case. You know, it's an opportunity for readjusting your plan. But like every time we as women have confronted the changes in our hormones, which we have for puberty or pregnancy or every single month when our hormones are right changing our lives, that this is just another change it's just another change in your hormones. And if you can get ahead of it and understand what's happening, it gives you an opportunity to really feel much more in control of who you are and that you don't have that sense that women often talk about, like I was at the top of my game and then menopause came and my body went crazy. (laughs) Right. But if you knew that it was coming and you had the education to know that sometime in your forties, you know, your hair might not be the same as it was, your skin may not be the same as it was, but expect this, right? Right, And plan for it, have options, have, you know, ways to think about getting the natural solutions that you need, which is why part of the reason I was so drawn to this business. It feels like we are really delivering help and solutions that make this phase of life just so much better. And that it feels that we're in a partnership with our customers in our community to deliver a new kind of message around menopause, which is really important for all of us. Yeah. I think one of the things that I'm hearing just from the beginning of your career is that doing meaningful work has always been a priority for you. That it's not just showing up and marketing or running things or finance. There's a purpose. Uh, A lot of women are finding that over 40. So it's awesome (laughs) that you kind of started that way. So you don't have to make any big, huge shifts because it was already part of who you are. Well, yeah. Being the CEO of a startup is a huge shift from yes. an executive in a major it's company. It's not for the weak. <laughs> no. And uh, I'm lucky that I have a lot of support, not only from my family, but also from my board and everyone who is involved in this business. But I think that there is something about being in your late 40s where you think, how am I going to spend the next 20 years if I'm going to work that long? And that I, I want it to feel, you know, worthwhile. And it yeah. is, for me, it is certainly going back to my roots of thinking about healthcare reform and the importance of, you know, creating access to solutions for people and women to be able to get the support that they need in every way. I come from a line of medical professionals. My grandmother was a nurse in the First World War. Wow. Yeah. And didn't get married until later in her life and had my mother when she was 40. And that was in Northern Ireland. That's unheard of then. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> unheard of. And my mother is a psychoanalyst and a doctor and has spent much of her career also focused on the livelihood of women, how women can sort of take control of their own 
destiny. All of that obviously has rubbed off on me, especially when we think about really trying to make changes in the way that we talk about menopause and being, you know, over 45 as a woman in America and a woman in the world. Right. It's so interesting because we go through plenty of changes in our lives from getting our periods to pregnancy, like you were saying, and I feel like people are getting more vocal. I mean, we've got years ago what to expect when you're expecting and pregnancy groups, your baby is the size of a pea and Mm -hmm. all of that. But then we hit these changes and it's sort of like, oh, you're getting to the end and we're living longer than ever Right. that it's not even close (laughs) Yeah. To the end. Be, previously, I mean, a, a hundred years ago, yeah, you're lucky if you got to this point. Totally right. And yeah. so, uh, oh, is I, that your dog? Dog is like knocking on the door. I'm gonna work with it. Let's work with it. I have three kids at school right now. You have two kids at school right now. I we've got you've got how many dogs? Two dogs. Two dogs. I've got three. So basically, yeah. if you're hearing stuff in the background, we're working moms. <laughs> That's right. That is absolutely right. Moving forward. <laughs> exactly. It is every day. Every day. It's interesting. I, I started at Kendra the week that Los Angeles closed. Oh, wow. And I had never worked from home. In Ever? My whole career. Never. And I hated the idea of working from home, actually, because... I loved being in the office, right? I loved to travel for work (laughs) and I love, love my family, but I was used to having this kind of quiet sanctuary Mm -hmm. to be my working self versus my mommy self and the blending of the lines, especially in the beginning as every woman, every working woman knows that at the beginning of the pandemic, when we didn't know what was happening with school and we didn't know what was happening with our jobs, that it was really hard to figure out and how to draw the line. And, you know, interestingly, my husband has a home office. So the kids and I sat downstairs in a, like a table that was a triangle with each of them and me, all the three of us working together in this like new world order. And it was great and crazy. And then eventually I was like, I actually banished the children to their bedrooms and I took over the living room because it was the most sunlit room in the house. So it was hard. It's a lot. You know, I've worked from home for the past few years. And so this hasn't been a huge change for me, but they usually go away. (laughs) And even my husband who works for Disney is like across from me in the office now. We finally, okay, we've been home since March. We finally redid the office yeah. um, like yesterday where he has a normal size desk and we're cohabitating because who knows when things are going to change. And even when they do, they may not be back to quote unquote normal. So right. anyway, I'm just embracing it now. The entire evolution. So. Yes, exactly. So speaking uh-huh. of embracing evolution, so I was yeah. saying that, you know, we go through these other things and it's all acceptable. We've started yeah. talking more about it. But menopause, you know, I think on podcasts and in some social media circles and obviously within girlfriend groups, we're able to talk about it more. But I love that you haven't just created a product that's a solution, but you've created a community and you've created a place where you encourage women to not just use your products for obviously that, okay, your sleep one, the sleep one, I'm obsessed. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I, use, I use all of them, but the sleep one is really good. Yeah. The sleep one is good. And you're right with the lotion, like, yeah, because we, we all have our stuff, yeah. <laughs> right? And I actually went into menopause at 35 because I had surgical menopause. Oh, yeah. And so I'm ahead of the game. And yeah. so- I've tried a lot of different things and here's a little uh, secret that I didn't tell you, but when we started talking about doing a partnership, I'm extremely careful about who I partner with because there's so much crap out there. I mean, look at the vitamin shelf alone in the local grocery store and it's like half that stuff's not really getting into your body and what is getting into your body is crap. Right. And so I'm really careful on what I sort of put my stamp of approval on. So I'm on your website. And the funny thing is the person I would reach out to 
my guru slash advisor, mm. is on your website, Dr. Suzanne Gilbert Glenn. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> She's a friend of mine. Yes. And I always go to her, like whether it's like this vaccine or they're pushing this in medical. And I love that Kendra is estrogen free. Yeah. So that's not on me as far yeah. as like, I, I'm not a doctor. Right. And I, <laughs> I know it's crazy, but I'm not. I want to try things that I know aren't going to like counteract anything else I might be taking, anything else the audience is taking. So I reached out to Dr. Suzanne. I'm like, tell me what you know. Yeah. <laughs> and she was oh, like, good. it's great. It's great. <laughs> so, yes. yes. So Suzanne. the community aspect, you have a Facebook group. Yep. I'll link to that. Why is it important to Kendra to not, like you could very easily just sell your product. Mm. Why is it important to build community? Well, for exactly the reason that you said, which is women don't talk about menopause. Even with our close friends, I feel like menopause is, I don't know that it's necessarily taboo, but I think it's that idea that it sneaks up on you mm. and that it starts to happen in this slow way that you're Googling things that make you think you have a brain tumor, you know, everything, well, cause everything that starts to happen, that's just like a little bit different, or, you know, maybe you think you're pregnant at first cause you're missing your period, but it's, you feel that it's highly unlikely or any of those changes that are happening to your body, but that you don't think in the immediate consideration set when you're in your late thirties or early forties, Oh wait, maybe this is menopause. Right. And it's because we never prepared anybody. We've never prepared any women for the idea that it might be menopause. And very often when you go to doctors and you say things like, I feel like my hair is thinning, or I feel like my hair is falling out more than it's used to. That was the first one for me was that my hair, I just started to like shed all of this hair and that I had no idea why. And it was obviously changing hormones. But the first doctor that I went to was my GP and she, even she mm. was like, oh, well, maybe you have a vitamin D imbalance or maybe you have this or maybe you have that. And, and I was like, you know, it wasn't actually until I saw Dr. Suzanne that it was just like, well, you're 45. So obviously this is the beginning of menopause. And my big moment also came from another good friend of mine when I was talking to her on the phone, she's my best friend. And she said, you know, isn't it a killer when you get a hot flash in a meeting at work and like, you have to go hide it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Menopause? We're way too young for right. that. <laughs> and she knew all the science because her sister is an OB. And she's mm. like, no, no, no. The average age of a woman in menopause is 51. And it can start anytime, you know, in your late 30s and early 40s. And I just hadn't considered it. So, you know, part of what I view as so important for Kendra is educating women so they don't feel like it sneaks up on them. Right. I say all the time that menopause shouldn't be like fight club. <laughs> the first rule of menopause is we should talk about menopause right. with everybody. And to your point about women living longer, we live 40% of our lives in this peri post menopausal state where our estrogen wow. is, you know, on depletion and that means it's just built into the fabric of who we are as women. And it doesn't have to be this sort of crazy moment that happens all of a sudden because it doesn't happen all of a sudden, right? Your hormones right. don't usually just drop. I mean, it does happen for some women that their hormones really drop off a cliff or they have surgically induced. Surgical, yeah. Induced, right? But, but typically. Most women, it's a gradual decline and you begin to see these changes in your body and you can start to take supplements in advance or you can start to work on your body in advance of that moment so you feel more prepared. Right. Well, if it could be like Fight Club and Brad Pitt were involved, I'd be yeah. all right with it. <laughs> Totally. I mean, and, you know, excluding Brad Pitt, of course. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> you've been at Kindra since March. Yes. You've been in that community. You see how active it is. You see how engaged the women are. What, if anything, has surprised you since starting there? The thing that surprises me is because we get so many questions and we're talking about it all the time, is the reminder that other women are talking about it. 
I have to remind myself, which I do, you know, I visit other Facebook groups that are talking Mm -hmm. about menopause and I can see how many women for the first time are saying something is happening to my skin or I'm extremely dry or I'm I'm having, you know, vaginal itching, which keeps to being diagnosed as a yeast infection, right? But it's never going away. Well, you know what? It turns out it's not an infection as prescribed by your doctor. It's actually vaginal dryness. So you're like being treated for the wrong thing. And I think that's part of the education and the miseducation that happens for many women. So even very often women experience anxiety or more sort of depressive symptoms. And the immediate reaction is for a doctor to prescribe medication and doesn't necessarily say this could be part of your menopausal transition. Let's take a look at the whole you and see what else is happening in your body instead of automatically prescribing things to help. Actually, another one that happened to me was I got terrible joint pain, which again is a can be a hormonal side effect. And um, my doctor wanted to prescribe gabapentin. Wow. Yeah. And without any sort of RA diagnosis or anything like that. Yeah. And that was the last time I saw that doctor. But, you know, the idea I was going to give you that tip to to run. (laughs) Um, But the idea that it wasn't even part of the conversation was to say what's happening to your hormone levels. Let's think about where you are in your life journey. And didn't occur to me either Mm -hmm. until I began to really look into it, which was part of it. Well, you bring up a great point because how can we be empowered to discuss it and to ask questions when the medical experts aren't necessarily, some take it upon themselves to do that for themselves in their professional development and some are just old school and they don't. I just, I have flashbacks to like, you know, the seventies and eighties and there'd be a woman in her fifties or, you know, and she's just like, quote unquote, crazy. You know, like, whoa, what's wrong with her? Oh, she must be going through the change. Like, why do we suffer yeah. instead of go, hey, there are a couple of things that you can do. And imagine, I got a little emotional when you were saying, but imagine a doctor saying to you or to one who's feeling maybe out of control emotionally, depression and, and or anxiety or something that's not specifically clinical yeah. and yeah. saying like, you're not crazy. Right. This is natural. Right. Let's find you some solutions, but let's not cover it up with medications that, by the way, could cause weight gain and right. other issues in menopause right. or impossible to come off of. Yeah. I know 10 years ago when I was going through this stuff, I, I was on anti-anxiety or antidepressant something and coming off of it was an absolute nightmare. Mm-hmm. Like That should be last resort. Yeah. Obviously, there are clinical things. You should always see your doctor, consult yeah. your doctor. Always. But we're talking about, I'm having mood swings. I'm having vaginal dryness. The lack of sleep is everything. So imagine just taking your sleep supplement. It said, take 30 minutes before bed. I was like, yeah, whatever. I was was like, I am ready. I am ready for bed. (laughs) Sleep is my friend. It was amazing. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, I think you are absolutely right. The lack of education for ourselves isn't limited only to ourselves because in many circumstances, the medical community isn't necessarily trained to talk about menopause. And, you know, I think that the fine line that menopause walks, which is, this is not a condition. So right in theory, it doesn't need training because it's not a condition, but the sensitivity to the fact that these changes are happening in your body can affect everything else in your body. So like as hormones do, hormones affect Mm -hmm. everything in your body. And I think that that's part of, back to your question about why the community is so important because every woman menopauses differently, Mm -hmm. right? None of us have the same story. And it's so personal to your life, especially when it comes to things like vaginal dryness, you know, where it might be affecting your relationship with your partner in a way that you had never anticipated would happen or yeah. a change in libido or any of those things. 
that are then exacerbated by lack of sleep or feeling mood swings or weight gain, you know, all of that coming together. And that the community is important to be able to share those kinds of experiences, which is one of the things I learned at iVillage. Sometimes it's easier to talk to women who are not in your close circle about what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. It's easier to tell, right? Like you tell your life story to someone on an airplane (laughs) in the old days, Um, you know, because they're a stranger, it's easier to talk to them than it is to talk to your circle of girlfriends because you don't know kind of what's happening in their version of this experience. And we are trying to be there sort of at every opportunity to be able to give you the education that you need. And then also the sounding board from other women who are going through the same kind of experience. Right. You're totally right because you already have a bias about your friends or sisters or, and they have the same with you. And so they either think you could just tough through it. You got this. But somebody we don't know is like, oh, they just address the symptoms and not who you are as a person. Right. (laughs) You know, it's much better. That's why I have a community. (laughs) Well, exactly. Well, exactly. I mean, that's why communities are so powerful because for for everything that is a, either a passion point or a place where you're having challenges is to be able to find people who have like gone through that experience. I mean, how do you change a tire on a bike? You probably go find somebody who has done it before who teaches you how to change a tire on a bike and then it's a lot easier for you to do it it's exactly the same with these things that happen in your body and it's different than again when i was at i village and we would send out our weekly email on the you know 38 weeks 40 weeks of pregnancy mm-hmm. right what's happening you reference this too with you know you know how big the baby is this week yeah. and then the next week and then the next week in this circumstance, it doesn't work like that. It isn't like we can send out based on a schedule that this is the day, the last right. day that you got your regular period. And every week we're going to send you a message that tells you. Wouldn't that be amazing though? Yes, it would be amazing. <laughs> I think you just be- came up with something right now. <laughs> no, I, I believe me, I've been trying to execute it. But it's, it's harder than you think. Uh, but there are a lot of things that are similar depending on your phase. Actually, we are uh, next week launching a new quiz tool, assessment tool that will help you pinpoint better kind of what's happening on your own menopausal journey so that you can not only take a look at the things that are most relevant to you, but then also begin to find women who are in that same phase and evolution. But I'm sure our doctors would also tell us, even based on your hormone levels, it doesn't necessarily dictate that the same thing is happening. If our hormone levels were the same, that we would be experiencing the same kinds of changes in our bodies because it doesn't really, it doesn't work exactly like that. Right. I think just by making menopause less lonely and isolating, helping us not feel like, oh, this is just me. I'm breaking down or all of those negative things. I mean, I know for me, surgical menopause happened at 35 and there weren't too many women who could understand, I mean, I had just had a baby, you know, just a few months before. And so there weren't a lot of women who understood being 35 and going through it. And so now even as a leader of a community, when somebody talks about menopause, I tag other people because Mm -hmm. I'm not going through natural menopause. So I have no idea what it feels like. I only know what it feels like to wake up one day post baby and then menopausal. And so The community, the products, the messaging, all of it, I think is a huge leap in us not feeling like we're alone. I believe that if we embrace this period, it's not all great. I get it. (laughs) There are a lot of things that are happening, but if we embrace it and work with it and talk to each other and stop feeling shame around it, like there's something wrong with us, that it's the beginning to, I mean, I've always felt that women over 40 have the power to change the world. I mean, we've been through some things. We've had some experiences. We give fewer Fs. (laughs) We can prioritize. It's like we don't spend a lot of time, money, effort on things that don't matter. Yeah. And the better we feel when we take on the world. All right. I think the better we'll all be. (laughs) Right. I definitely believe that being educated about those things helps take the sting out of it and the stigma out of it, you know, because 
a hot flash can be wildly uncomfortable mm -hmm. to your point. You know, it is uncomfortable because you, you can't control what's happening in your body. Yeah. But being able to talk to other women about the fact that it's happening or maybe not feeling like you have to hide it in the office right. or having solutions and natural remedies to products that you can take to help diminish the fact that those hot flashes are coming right. empowers you or at least puts you back somewhat in the driver's seat of knowing what's happening in your body to be able to adapt to those changes. Because right. I think that's just such a huge part of this challenge is the not knowing that it is sneaking up on you. It's right. stealing your youth. It's making you crazy. It's all the expressions that we've heard for years and years. But you also think about the fact that the average age of a woman in menopause is 51. The average age of a female CEO is also 51. Wow. So it says a lot about where we are in our lives when this change is upon us in, in many ways, potentially, right? Our careers are changing, our careers are evolving, our families are changing. You know, we might be saying goodbye to our kids for the first time going to college. I mean, so much can be happening or have nine-year-old twins like I do. But, you know, <laughs> all of those emotions too built into this time of life that is both so much freedom and such a high and then also comes with these changes to your body that you don't necessarily want to welcome. Right. But talking about it is the first step, using your products. I was working with a client one time, we were sitting outside and we were just chatting at a Starbucks and I saw her and I'd never experienced anything like this. I saw her like start to sweat a little bit. It was a warm day, but like you could see, I could see the natural progression of a hot flash she didn't miss a beat. She just kept talking. She didn't yeah. acknowledge it. And, you know, there's a certain industry you're like, oh, right. I don't want to, I don't want to never work again. Right. Um, but it would have been lovely to have said, like, I've been there. But I, I mean, I didn't want to be the person to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> but next time I'll just open up one of your <laughs> supplements. And I'll just <laughs> exactly. You'd be like, you go. These, they can really help you. <laughs> I'd be like a walking advertisement. But yeah, I just think that the work that you're doing is really important. And I appreciate it as someone who runs a community over 40. I'm thrilled, like I said, with this partnership. We're doing a giveaway, which I mentioned in the intro before you came on in the community. And I just think it's the beginning of empowering women to just show up anyway. Like this, this is right. not the stuff to stop you. We're totally. You've not. been through way too much shit right. for, for yeah. a hot flash to stop you. Yes, for sure. For sure. And for all of these unknown things to stop you. I think that that's part of the reason, you know, I do think in addition to our community and the focus of all of our work, part of what is important to me is that our products work. I think that's why Dr. Suzanne and you use them, you try yes. them and they actually work. And there's a lot of scientific backing that has gone into developing these specific formulas and how yes. we think about why each ingredient is important and how we can not only relieve, but also kind of elevate your sense of being, even when it comes to things like brain fog, which is my, yeah. you know, worst, worst offending issue. Yeah. But that all of that is really important when you can buy things off the shelf that don't necessarily work. And again, you would feel like I'm trying, but I can't take control of my body, right? right? Because it doesn't necessarily work. And so you have to find what works for you, right? That's really what it's about. And even as we think about expanding our product line, there's so much focus in really feeling like we can develop things that will make a difference for women, right? Through our emotional support, but also through physical relief of some of these changes that are happening in our bodies. Right. You know, 10, 20 years ago, I didn't think too much about my food that I was eating or, you know, vitamins. I just felt like I could just go and, and grab something off the grocery store shelf and I feel like every choice I make in my life as I approach 50 is an investment in me. Yeah. I, I don't have the money or the time or the space or the interest in just grabbing something that's filled with junk. I want to be so much more intentional. Right. It's funny that you say that because 
the line on our site, which is new, we recently read brand our new site. site. It looks gorgeous. Thank you. Says, welcome to the new era of you. Mm. Right. That this is the new era of you because it's a new beginning. It's a rebirth of your body in so many ways. And, you know, when we talk to women about like, what are the things they're happy about during this phase? Because many women actually report being happier as they get later in life because they yeah. feel like they have more control over a lot of things. They're happy they don't get their periods anymore and they don't have to worry about it. They're happy that they have more time and they can focus on the things that they really love. And that this doesn't have to take away from being happy. And I think it's a little bit of a dichotomy of the way that we have positioned menopause for ourselves as if it is here to take away something <laughs> from us, right. where it's just part of the natural progression of who we are as women. And that's why I always go back to education, because I just feel like I myself, if it had even occurred to me at that phase, that it was a thing I should consider, I don't think I would have felt like it was like sneaking up on me and trying to get me, you know, right, it was, right. it's just was the beginning of my hormone evolution. Right. Yeah. So what's next? Obviously the website's going to have that quiz and I'm a sucker for a quiz ever since I, the Cosmo days back when I was I, a teenager. <laughs> I know. I love quizzes. I love them. Too. But love where do you see the company and also you personally, you're in professionally, where do you see things going? Give us a sneak peek. Uh, well, um, obviously, I am 100 million percent committed to the success of Kendra. We really want to be doing more to help more women. And that's mm. the number one priority. And the ways that we can do that are expanding our community resources. That's a big priority for us. Uh, introducing community on the site also, in addition to through the Facebook community, mm -hmm. thinking more about opportunities to develop products that are needed. We've done a few surveys with our customers and community members around where we feel like women need more help, that we could look at developing products in those areas. So we're looking at, at all of those things. And we've also spent a lot of time thinking about how we can support our frontline workers, nurses and teachers in particular, and medical professionals, and being able to deliver support to those women who are under right extreme duress in Can't this space, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so even as part of our holiday program, we're going to be doing uh, gifts for everything that is purchased. We're also going to give away lotions and hydration tools to our to frontline workers to support them as much as we can with the tools that we have at our disposal. And we think that that's really important because we want to give back to the people who are supporting all of us through this right. time. Um, but really continuing to grow our community tools, our education resources, and find new ways to create relief for women who are looking for support around the physical challenges in this phase. Right. And I love the holistic approach because one of the reasons I wanted to do this partnership, just that whole self-care. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you're rolling your eyes, like I roll my eyes at self-care too sometimes because it's such a buzzword it's become. But the acknowledgement that we are probably the ones doing all the work for the holidays and the cooking and the cleaning and the educating along with our teachers and the holidays come up and I just think about like all the ways I'm going to single-handedly put it together. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but my husband is more than happy to help if I assign certain things, but it's, you know, I got to assign those things, which is a lot of work. Yeah. And so Kendra is acknowledging that and trying to like, Hey, at least make a little bit of this about you. <laughs> right. well, I think that you can be a superwoman and take care of yourself. And right. naturally, right, taking care of yourself allows you to be more of a superwoman because right. there's so many studies now on burnout and how you can sort of drive yourself over the edge. And I think that taking care of yourself, I mean, I'm not very good at self-care either, I admit, but I take my supplements. I sometimes you get in a hot bath. I mean, it <laughs> happens. And... um 
I sometimes think about it. (laughs) (laughs) But what I know is that when I don't do it for a while, somebody in my family is like, do you think you should take a hot bath? Do you think you want to like go, do you want to pick the movie tonight, mom? Uh, but that that getting ahead of that. is better for everybody. <laughs> if you can find ways to take care of yourself in order to do the things that make you a better you, because that's really what we're ultimately all after. When you have simple things that can help you take care of yourself, why not take advantage of those? This is easy. Like it's right. super easy. <laughs> right. It, no one's here saying you have to go run 90 minutes a day. This is very small things right. that can yield extremely productive results. I know women who just stopped having sex. Like it was like, it's uncomfortable. I'm not doing it anymore. It's not worth it. It doesn't have to be the case. There's actual help out there. It's actually really interesting. The nice thing about the lotion is it works a a lot like the way you use your moisturizer on your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, I often will joke with people like we spend so much time moisturizing our face and taking care of our face, but why not take care of our vagina? Like you you could do that too. But, um, but you know, it absorbs just like the cream that you would put on your face. So it's not like gross and messy and sticky. It's not like a lube. It's genuinely lotion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Right. And so, but I think that women don't anticipate that because we're so used to sort of these old fashioned things. Like one of the other things, you know, we have this like beautiful applicator that you use Mm -hmm. that delivers moisture to an area of the vagina called the introitus, which is really just the entryway. And Mm -hmm. the reason that we designed it that way is that you don't need those crazy invasive drugstore applicators that were probably designed by men to like put moisturizer all the way up inside of your vagina and then to drip right. down onto your underwear. There's actually a new way to think about doing it that right. back to your point about self-care. And I think one of the great advantages of many of these direct-to-consumer businesses is that they allow us to solve problems in new ways for people and allow us to innovate on the product lines and allow you to try finding the thing that is right for you. So maybe those drugstore solutions are right for you, but if they're not, there are other ways to help yourself get back on the horse, so to speak. Here's a TMI alert. So if you need to look away, look away now, (laughs) but you don't have to necessarily use it by yourself. I'm just saying like, yeah, Foreplay is a, is at a, a <laughs> is not happening that much in a house full of homeschoolers. Yes. And so when I'm going to do something every day, my husband, he's, I mean, actually, he doesn't care. He, <laughs> he'll offer to help me with my Kendra. <laughs> right. right. Well, I think you've launched a whole new market with that. <laughs> Ultimately, it's better for both of us. Yeah. Because right. if I'm happy and comfortable and in the mood and interested and feel empowered that I don't feel like I'm shriveling up, you know, then it's better for him. Yeah. Right. I I love it. I love it. I I think that's exactly right. Cause for you that it works and for your husband, it works. That's awesome. You know, and it becomes playful. It's less about this period of my life and solutions. And while I appreciate all that as a couple, that's not the sexiest, (laughs) you know? And so It can be playful as well. Thank you for that, Catherine. It's my pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, anything else you feel like my audience just needs to know that we haven't covered? My parting sentiment is talk about it. Talk about menopause. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it with your daughters. Let your daughters know that this is going to happen someday in a way that isn't scary, but that is normal and natural in the same way that we educate our daughters about the first time they're going to have their period, or we educate our daughters about getting pregnant. This is just part of being a woman and it doesn't have to be scary or foreign. It's just the next phase. And depending on how you present it probably has a lot of impact on the way she might think about it when She's in her 40s too, right? We can all help by kind of paying it forward Mm -hmm. to younger women. And and not only our daughters, but women who we know who are in their 30s. Our team is made up of women of lots of different ages and how well-educated the younger women are on our team thinking about this as 
a life evolution. And you can see from the way they are obviously talking to their friends that this is like a big discovery for all of them to yeah. understand that not only is this coming, but also you can handle it. Right. Yes. And it, yes. it doesn't have to be this like mysterious thing that's going to happen. And we should talk about it and we should celebrate this yeah. time because this is like the best time of our lives in so many ways. Absolutely. And even when my package arrived, my son had asked like, what's that? Mom? And I was like, oh. And so I, I was talking about menopause. And the first thing he asked me, he said, does that mean you don't have a period anymore? No. Oh, yeah. And uh, I said, yeah. And he said, oh, is that good? You know? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, in many ways, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so even just, I'm not talking about diving in deep into menopause with your yeah, teenage right. sons, but just making it so it's not like, hush, hush, yeah. you can't say certain words. I think the more men understand yeah. what's going on yeah. younger, yeah. then it's not such a surprise to them as well. I'm glad. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hide them. I yeah. want them to understand there's life outside of you, kid. Right. <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. You'll be back for an hour to discuss that. That'll be yeah, the title exactly. of the next episode. So, Catherine, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Thank you so much for listening. We keep the conversation going in our free and private Facebook group. So make sure you join us over there. Also, if you have any questions, comments, wishes, hopes, dreams of something you'd like to hear on 40 Thrive, send us an email at hello at 40thrive.com. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Spring has sprung, and with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconu. Coconu is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments, with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu.